The Clipper crews are two-thirds of the way through their year-long circumnavigation of the world. Yet on their immediate horizon looms their biggest test, the Pacific Ocean. Everyone thinks the Pacific Ocean is a nice, big, calm ocean. It isn't. The clip around the world uh, yacht race has been over the North Pacific um, three times already. And uh, we've seen snow in the rigging. Uh, we've had boats lose their, their masts. Um, we've had uh, a couple of crew injuries, unfortunately, uh, and a medivac. This is a toughie. This is a real test of character. While it's a fairly daunting proposition, their Chinese hosts in Qingdao do their best to distract them with mind-blowing ceremonies oh, really went all out. and generous hospitality. But soon, everyone has to face their Pacific destiny and prepare for a gruelling month-long battle against the world's mightiest ocean all the way to San Francisco, USA. And to give their humongous voyage an extra tough dimension, it's the Northern Hemisphere winter. Just to prove that point, it starts snowing. That seems a bit unfair. No, I'm still looking how, how to escape, actually. <laughs> when racing resumes, the crews are given hardly any time to find their sea legs as a brutal storm hits them head on. Welcome to the sea of Japan! <laughs> Despite the fact if you look out there, it looks pretty miserable and the wind's pretty strong and it's pretty horrible. I'm imagining this is actually going to be small fry in comparison to what we may well encounter. We won't see land for four and a half weeks, at least. Which is quite scary. One of the unfortunate things that more often than not is the crew that get hurt rather than the boat breaking when we get these conditions. But so far, so good, everyone's dealing with it. But it's about as far as you can get from your Thomas Cook holiday. Sadly, skipper Ian's words turn out to be prophetic. In the violent sea state, 60-year-old Kath Draper cracks her head, opening up a nasty-looking wound. Seemingly, I slid across to the starboard heads, whacked my head. I don't think I've ever, ever in my life been knocked out before. So they did say it was probably going to be a tough leg, just to dig the hills in and um, keep going. During the next fortnight, the Qingdao team battle against hostile conditions. But just as they're getting worn down by their relentless voyage, they receive a much needed psychological boost by passing the halfway mark. It's an interesting one. It's uh, if you think how long it feels like we've been going sometimes, uh, and then we know we've got the same to go again. Uh, having said that, I think getting over the halfway line is a significant milestone. As it turns out, the second half of the race pretty much replicates what's gone before. With nasty weather fronts following one after the other. I think it does us all good now and again to kind of um, just have to put up with, um, you know, a little bit less than we're used to. Um, and we've, we've had various discussions on, you know, on the colour. Um, everybody goes on about the blue Pacific, but we've seen no blue at all. It's just been constant grey. Well, everyone's feeling decidedly blue by a lack of blue sea. Kath has been feeling off colour for most of the race, her injury shaking her confidence. But during one of the high-octane downwind surfing spells, she casts aside her inhibitions and takes the helm for the first time. I enjoyed it, actually. It was good. 
I sort of lost my confidence with all that stuff going on for me at the beginning. I'm really pleased that I managed to do that. I feel like a, a bit like a Cheshire cat. <laughs> well, Kath reflects in her personal achievement further south on Geraldton, Western Australia. Any thoughts are confined to surviving a truly horrendous storm. Goodbye! Out of the blue, an abnormally large wave smashes into them, causing extensive damage and injuring some on-deck crew. As they attempt to bring everything back under control, their chief concern is with 50-year-old Dr Jane Hitchens, who's drifting in and out of consciousness. Oh, is that? Pinned by the water. But I do remember screaming, so I must have been at least breathing out. Um, and I must have been underwater at that point in time. And then as the wave retracted, I then was sucked out from that space I was squashed in. I remember thinking at the time, I've broken my back. The Coast Guard asked Juan if he thought I would survive 24 hours. That was pretty scary because that sudden, I suddenly realised that was um, serious stuff. Further ahead, approaching San Francisco Bay is Gold Coast Australia, who notch up their seventh win in nine races. Later on, Qingdao also complete their journey. It's, it's, it's a great, great feeling. I'm very, very happy, very happy. I'm just like, yeah! <laughs> But still roughly 500 miles away is Geraldton, Western Australia. Thankfully, they're in much better shape. The US Coast Guard have reached the scene and taken the injured crew into their care. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Meanwhile, their Pacific flight is catching the attention of the world's media. But fortunately, there's nothing but good news to report. How are we? After that extraordinary and sometimes petrifying adventure, the next leg from San Francisco to New York via the Panama Canal is mercifully all plain sailing. Being able to come through uh, the Panama Canal, something I never thought I would do. It seems so strange to be uh, you know, so far around the world and uh, uh, on the way home now. Gaining the most in racing terms is winning machine Gold Coast Australia, whose two victories give them a virtually impregnable lead in the overall <laughs> rankings, but below their stiff competition all the way down the leaderboard. This means the crews are officially into their final leg home. And as their epic journey draws to an end, well done, guys. emotions start flowing. Woo!